Hello, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky, and in this podcast, I'll be starting Chapter 5 on the integumentary system. The integumentary system is an organ system that covers the external body. It's made up primarily of the skin, but also includes a variety of accessory structures, such as the hair, the various glands, such as oil glands and sweat glands, and the nails, including the fingernails and toenails. The skin is also known as the cutaneous membrane, and it's the largest organ of the body in overall surface area and weight. It covers about 22 square feet of the body surface and weighs about 10 pounds, and it ranges in thickness from very thin, roughly half a millimeter, which is located in the thin skin of the eyelids, to over four millimeters thick, which is found on the heels and soles of the foot. The skin consists of two major components, the epidermis and dermis. The epidermis is made up of layers of epithelial tissue, and it's the thinner, most superficial, or outermost component of the skin. The dermis is the deeper region that consists of thick concentrations of connective tissue. The hypodermis is a region found below the dermis, hypo of course meaning under or below. The hypodermis is not considered to be a region of the skin. It's also known as the subcutaneous layer or sub-Q layer. It consists primarily of connective tissues such as areolar or loose connective tissue and adipose or fat tissue. The hypodermis acts as a major reservoir for fat deposits and also is highly vascularized, containing large concentrations of blood vessels that supply the dermis of the skin. In this illustration, you can see the relative difference in thicknesses between the superficial epidermis and the dermis, dermis being much thicker and much more diverse in overall tissues and cellular structures. You can see that the dermis is vascularized with its concentration of blood vessels originating from the hypodermis below, the hair follicles, muscle, glandular tissue, and the dense concentration of connective tissues. There is also a diversity of sensory structures found within the skin that are sensitive to temperature and pressure and specialized sensations such as pain and tickle and itch. We can see here in the hypodermis the piscinian or lamellated corpuscles which are pressure sensitive sensory receptors. The integumentary system also carries out a diverse array of functions, including protection, where it's protecting the body from the outside external environment. It plays many roles in regulation, such as the regulation of body temperature. Because of the highly vascularized nature of the integumentary system, it plays a role in blood storage. It's also helping with excretion and absorption of materials. It also plays a big role in sensory input by detecting a variety of cutaneous sensations such as touch, pressure, and pain. The epidermis is the thinnest, most superficial region of the skin. It's made of layers of keratinized stratified squamous epithelium Keratinized means it's reinforced with concentrations of the tough protein keratin. Stratified means it consists of multiple layers. And squamous means that the epithelial cells have a very flat shape. There are five main layers or strata of the epidermis that we'll be reviewing in a little bit. The dermis is the thickest, deeper region of the skin that's made up of dense irregular connective tissue, which contains lots of collagen for strength 
as well as elastic fibers which give the skin its ability to stretch and recoil. These protein fibers are woven together to give the skin lots of tensile strength, which means it can be pulled and stretched without damage. The dermis also includes a diverse collection of accessory structures, such as the glands and the hair follicles, nerves, and the blood vessels. Let's now explore the overall structure and function of the epidermis, the different cell layers, or strata, and the different types of cells found within these layers. The four major types of cells found in the epidermis are the keratinocytes, melanocytes, Langerhans cells, and the Merkel cells. Most of the epidermal cells are keratinocytes, roughly 90% of them. Keratinocytes make up the bulk of the cell layers of the epidermis. They're called keratinocytes because they contain fibers of the tough protein keratin, which provides lots of physical protection to the skin. The keratinocytes also produce lamellar granules, which secrete a waxy substance that helps waterproof the skin and prevents foreign materials from entering it. The tough proteins of the keratinocytes are also used to perform the job of connecting cells to each other within the epidermis, forming cellular junctions that bind the cells in all directions to neighboring cells. The melanocytes make up about 8% of the epidermal cells, and their main function is to produce a pigment called melanin. Melanin is a brown, black, or yellowish-red pigment that creates skin color and protects the keratinocytes nucleus and the DNA within against ultraviolet or UV radiation from the sun. The melanocytes have long, skinny projections that move in between the keratinocytes through which they transport melanin into the keratinocyte. The Langerhan cells, also called the epidermal dendritic cells, develop within the red bone marrow with the blood cells and then migrate to the epidermis. They serve as immune system helpers, assisting the white blood cells in their recognition and destruction of microbes that enter the skin through damage to the epidermis. The Merkel cells are found in the deepest layers of the epidermis. They're associated with a flattened region of a sensory neuron called a Merkel or tactile disc and function in detecting touch stimuli. Okay, now let's take a closer look and dig a little deeper into the epidermis and consider the different layers or strata. From deepest to most superficial, the layers include the stratum basale, the stratum spinosum, the stratum granulosum, the stratum lucidum, and the stratum corneum. The stratum basale is the deepest layer of the epidermis. It consists of one layer of keratinocytes. And some of these cells are stem cells that undergo continuous active cell division through mitosis, generating new keratinocytes. These cells contain a type of intermediate filament within their cytoskeleton called the tonofilaments, which are made of the protein keratin that protects the cells and attach to cell junctions called desmosomes. The desmosomes connect the stratum basale cells to each other on either side, as well as to the neighboring cells of the stratum spinosum found above. The tonofilaments also connect to another cell junction called the hemidesmosome, which attach the keratinocytes to the basement membrane found between the dermis and the epidermis. Also found within the stratum basale layer are the melanocytes as well as the Merkel cells and discs. 
Directly above the stratum basale is the stratum spinosum, which consists of eight to ten layers of keratinocytes, as well as some of the projections of the melanocytes and the Langerhan cells. This is where the epidermal cells begin to take on a more flattened appearance. Now the name spinosum is not entirely accurate in living tissue. The cells are not spiny, they're more round and inflated, but they resemble these thorny clusters of spines when the tissues are prepared for observation under the microscope. They have abundant collections of keratin intermediate filaments which connect with desmosomes to bind the cells to each other, which gives the skin lots of strength and flexibility. The stratum granulosum is a middle transitional layer of the epidermis, composed of three to five layers of flattened keratinocytes. The cells in this layer are undergoing apoptosis, which we know is a normal type of genetically programmed cell death. This is a transition zone in that these cells begin to die and break down as they are pushed up from the deeper blood vessels of the dermis, which is the main source of their oxygen and nutrients. As the cells die, the keratin filaments become more distinct and the cells take on a darker appearance due to the keratohyalin granules, which produce strong keratin fibers from the intermediate filaments. The cells also contain the lamellar granules, which are membrane-bound structures that secrete a lipid-rich product into the gaps between the cells found within these upper layers of the epidermis. These lipids help waterproof the epidermis and also help prevent foreign materials from entering the skin. The stratum lucidum is found only in the thick skin located on the palms, fingertips, and soles of the foot. This layer of the epidermis consists of four to six layers of clear, flat, dead cells that are loaded with lots of keratin for strength and reinforcement, providing extra toughness and durability for the thick skin. Remember, this is the clear layer. Lucid means clearness, clarity. The stratum corneum is the most superficial region of the epidermis and is made up of about 25 to 30 layers of very flat dead cells in most areas of the skin, but can consist of 50 or more layers in the thick skin. The cells of the stratum corneum are basically just concentrated keratin, which overlap each other like shingles on a roof. These cells are constantly shed and replaced by cells moving up from the deeper strata. This area offers physical protection from injury, as well as immune defense helping to protect against bacterial invasion. Too much friction will increase the cell production in this region, leading to the generation of more keratin and the formation of an extra thick deposit called a callus. As the epidermis grows, new cells produced in the metabolically active stratum basale gradually make their way to the surface of the stratum corneum. Remember the cells of the stratum basale are closest to the blood vessels of the dermis and are enriched with fresh oxygen and nutrients which they need to undergo their constant cell division through mitosis. The cells build up large deposits of keratin as they journey up through the strata in a process called keratinization, which takes anywhere from four to six weeks. These keratinized cells die eventually by apoptosis, are shed, and are replaced by freshly keratinized cells coming up from below. The cells of the stratum basale are regulated by various internal and external factors. For example, during injury and loss of epidermal cells, the basale cells will increase their rates of cell division. There are also hormone-like proteins called epidermal growth factors, or EGFs, that help regulate their activity as well.